All right, good morning. How are we doing? It is Palm Sunday. Uh, we begin what uh, many have called the week that changed the world, and that's really what it is. Uh, it is, uh, again, this retelling of what Jesus did for us, showing us his great love. So uh, we're going to have some special services this week, great time to invite friends uh, and, uh, you know, just experience the fullness of it. So Thursday night, 7 o'clock, upper room. Uh, we're going to talk about 
uh, the command to love each other. Uh, and then Good Friday, 1 o'clock in the afternoon, and also 7 at night. Uh, very similar services. Uh, but again, another opportunity to invite friends, uh, maybe someone who's curious about the faith, uh, to come to that very powerful message uh, about the cross. And then Easter Sunday, uh, 8 o'clock will be our early service, not 8.30, but 8 o'clock, a little bit early, to make room for Easter breakfast. Uh, so that'll be right after, in between the two services. So come out around 9, 9.30. If you're just coming for this service, uh, you can get some food. Uh, Easter egg hunt for the kids. Um, and uh, that'll be awesome. So we'll see you then, and we're going to get started with a great song reminding us of this uh, Palm Sunday uh, entry of Jesus into uh, the, the city of Jerusalem. Good morning again. Uh, great to have you with us. We are uh, 
again, going to be focusing on the, just the fact that Jesus is our king. Uh, and, and this next song really uh, just brings it all together, uh, that uh, Jesus isn't just part of our lives. Uh, he really is the center of, of everything. He is our everything. Uh, we want to kind of embrace not only that, but him fully. And so, again, we're going to sing the center of it all.
congregation may be seated as we turn to the reading of Scripture this morning. Good morning. The Old Testament reading is from Zechariah chapter 9, beginning at the ninth verse. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. Righteous and having salvation is he. Humble and mounted on a donkey, on the colt, the foal of a donkey. I will cut off the chariot of Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall speak peace to the nations. His rule shall be from sea to sea, from river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you double. The epistle reading is from Philippians, second chapter, beginning at the fifth verse. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God as a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of man, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Rob. I'd like to invite the children to come forward for our children's message for this morning. Come on down. Hey, good morning. Happy Palm Sunday to you guys. I've got some bags, and I want you to guess, because you'll be able to see what's in them, because they're clear bags. So you can see, I want you to guess what's in this bag. Does anybody know? What do you think? Cereal? Yep, it's cereal. You can probably tell me what kind of cereal, too, I bet. Cinnamon Toast Crunch. See, that's good. Kids know. They know it's specifically even what, it's not just generic cereal. Sorry, Eva, come on up. All right, Kayla's going to be here. She could probably guess this one. Um, what do you think? Gummy worms? Okay, close. They are, they're like gummies. Uh, Sour Patch Kids, that's right. Or you can just say candy. Gummies, that's fine. I call them gummies. And I got one last one. It's going to be harder to guess what this is. Do we know what that is? Band-Aids? Band this is junk mail. <laughs> your, your parents know what this is. This is just like some paper I had around the house that I don't want, and I shredded it up. Uh, and it'll go through the shredder shredder later, but it's just, so if somebody asked you later, like, hey, what did you see at church? What did pastor have in those bags? You would know, okay, he had some cinnamon toast crunch, he had some sour patch kids, and he also had some junk mail that he tore up, and you would be able to see that clearly what, what they're filled with. Now, these are also bags that haven't been filled, have they? So you wouldn't know, you can't really tell what's in these because there's nothing in them. They are empty. They are empty, empty, empty. But we could fill them with things. Uh, and we are a lot like these bags. We're not, we're not the same size, not at all. But, but God wants us to be filled with certain things. And often we're filled with the wrong things. What would some of the wrong things to be filled with? Like if your heart was filled with the wrong thing, what would it be? What is it? Junk mail, yes. Junk mail would be it. Yeah, that would be good. Awesome, I like that. What else? What kind of things does God not want us to do? And who does he not want us to be? 
bad, right? So if you, get, if, you're, if you were filled with anger, would that be good? To have your, you know, like if you were filled, if you put anger in there, that would be bad, wouldn't it? What about if you're always afraid, right? That, that would not be something God wanted you to be filled with, would he? What about a hatred? What about hating people? Does he want you to be filled with hate? No, not at all. Not at all. In fact, in the, in the, the Bible passage we just heard read, it said, have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus. In other words, the way, not the way we act, but who we should be. Like what we should be filled with is, and, and somebody at the, er, at the early service nailed it. They said, God's love. Doesn't, doesn't God want us to be filled with his love? There's no greater thing to be totally filled with. His love. So you know that he loves you. You know he died for you. And he wants you to be filled with that. And so when you're filled with that, what's going to come out of you? Like what's going to come out of your mouth? If, if you're filled with Jesus and his love and his forgiveness and you've been just taken care of, what, what kind of things are you going to come out of your mouth, do you think? Nice things. And even nicer than nice things, you're gonna, loving things are going to come out, right? You're going to see other people differently because you're filled with God's love. That's pretty cool because the only thing coming out of this bag is Cinnamon Toast Crunch, right? The only thing coming out of this bag is some gummies, right? And the only thing coming out of this bag is some, some trash, right? So we don't want trash. We want to have good things that come from God. And, and how was Jesus? He says it here that he emptied himself. Can you imagine that? He was God. And he said, you know what? I'm going to come down there as a nobody, and I'm going to be just like all of you. And you know what he did? He went to the cross for us, and that's what he did. And he showed us what love is about, and he's like, I want you to be filled with that. Now, how do we get filled with that? You're doing it right now. You're here listening to this. You're remembering that Jesus' love was for you. And he wants you to hear that over and over and over and over and over again until it fills your heart, till it fills your soul, till it fills your mind and everything so that you just know. No matter what happens to you, you know that God loves you. He's going to be there for you. You can turn to him. You can pray to him, and he's going to be there to listen. You can read the Bible every day. It's really cool. Even if you have a, you don't have phones yet, probably. I don't think anybody here has phones, probably. But even if you get a phone, like you can have like a Bible app or you can have like a story Bible book at home and just keep reading <laughs> all about those stories, about how Jesus loves you and how he is with you every single day because the entire Bible just tells you that, all right? So when we're filled with the Bible, we're filled with God's love for us, all right? So let's pray. Our hands we fold, our heads we bow to Jesus. We will all pray now. Dear Jesus, continue to fill our hearts and our minds, fill our lives with your love for us. That we would know that you loved us so much that you gave your very life for us. That you suffered on that cross and that you rose from the dead so that we might live, that we might have heaven. Lord, fill our hearts with that joy. Fill our hearts with that amazing news that we are your children, that you love us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you, guys. As you're heading back, have a good rest of Palm Sunday and Holy Week. Got a lot of good things coming up. And I got to put those Sour Patch Kids up here. I might get hungry during the sermon, so I may have to. I can always grab some of those, right? You guys wouldn't mind. But let's, uh, let's listen to that story that uh, Palm Sunday is based on. Uh, it comes to us from John's Gospel, the 12th chapter. And there we read that it was the next day, and this is after Jesus had raised Lazarus from the dead. And uh, just done some amazing things. And there was a large crowd that had come to the feast. They had heard that, that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and they went out to meet him, crying out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. And Jesus found a young donkey and he sat on it, just as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written about him and had been done to him. 
the crowd that had been with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to bear witness. The reason why the crowd went to meet him was that they had heard that he had done this sign. So the Pharisees said to one another, you see that you are gaining nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. This is our gospel for today. The king reigns forever and comes to redeem us. His strength will carry us. He is here, humble but mighty, of sorrow and splendor, entering Jerusalem to save us. He is here. <clears throat> the crowd chants and shouts, proclaiming his reign, honoring the one who overcomes. He is here. He left his throne in heaven, needs no one to guard him. He is mighty and omnipotent. The king is here. In him dwells all treasure. His throne is wisdom and knowledge. His name alone is exalted. The king is here. He makes everything new, the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end, the creator of all things. The king is here. He brings no army, wields the sword of the word. He needs no protection. The king is here. He who begins and he who finishes, he who fulfills, the king is here. The one who offers himself, the one who sacrifices it all, who came to usher in the kingdom of God, that king the only king, our king, he is here. Amen. He is here. Our king is here. But, but the problem is, do we see him as our, an actual king? like one who rules in our hearts. Uh, I, I think all of us would be okay with him being our savior. So when I mess up, when I need to be bailed out of a difficult situation, often of my own making, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, it's, I'm glad to have a savior. Sign me up for that. But what about him being the one that sets your values? Man, the one who you, who you listen to all the time, the one you take direction from. That's a little more difficult, isn't it? That's why we need this Palm Sunday to, to happen year after year, time after time, because I, we, we have a difficulty with, with the king part, I think. And, and, and that's because it's, it's this sin in us that wants to do it. And, and I can remember that... Um, it started early on for me and, and probably for you as well. When, when, you were, when you were young, there was probably something that everybody else had and you had to have it. For me, it was these, these brown shoes uh, from the Great American Shoe Store. Anybody remember this? The gas shoes. It's a G-A-S-S on the bottom of them. And I had to have them. Right? My, my parents couldn't afford them. I didn't care. Mom, you get a second job, whatever it is. I don't know what you got to do, rob a bank, but I want those shoes because I thought like, like we do with so many things. If only I have those, then everything else will just fall into place. Or I'll become president of the United States because I have these shoes. And, and you have your own thing that, that you just thought, if only I had that. And as we get older, that doesn't change. Just the, the things that we wish for, the perfect house, the perfect car, the perfect job, the perfect relationships, right? The perfect family, right? Is, is any of that possible? No. And, and sometimes when you get that thing that you've been waiting all your life for, I don't know about you, but it, it's, it's never as spectacular as you thought. It, it doesn't actually change your life. You just have a nice car or a nice house or, or a nice this or a nice that. So it does help you at all, but it really doesn't change your life the way Jesus does. I think all the things that we're shooting for, all the things we're hoping for, are, are just helping us to cope a little bit more with sin and its effects in our everyday existence. 
so that I'll be a little bit more comfortable, that I, that I won't have to think about it quite so much. But as Jesus rides into Jerusalem as our king, he's reminding us that he is what we need, not all those things that we're searching for. But that's been our issue, hasn't it? Even from, from the very beginning, from the Garden of Eden, with Adam and Eve, they believed the lie. The devil was like, you know, the serpent was like, you know, um, God's holding out on you. He knows that when you know what he knows, you'll be like him. You won't need him. It's really the opposite. It didn't bring a solution. It didn't bring them a better life. It didn't bring them the dream. It brought them a nightmare. It brought death. It brought sin. It brought, brought destruction. They begin to throw each other under the bus, and it all goes south. And if you look at the entire Old Testament, you'll just see it getting worse and worse and worse. And one of the most pivotal moments for me is, uh, and I think in the scripture, is when the people ask for a king. Do you remember this? Up to this point, God's been their king. Now, they had judges like Samson and Deborah, right? They had Gideon, right? My, my man, right? The big battle guy. And they had, they, had, they, had, they had people like Moses that God gave to help out. Like, you got some issues. You got some things. You got some, some work that gets, has to get done. All right, we'll give you some leaders. But if you notice, they weren't king. They were there to help. And they were there to work in, in service of God and his plan. But you have all these other nations that have kings. And God's people are like, you know, they're, they're, uh, suddenly they're little, they're little six-year-olds. Well, 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 Johnny has one of those, right? So does Betty over there. She's, she's got a king. They have a king. Her people have a king. Why can't we have a king, God? And God's like, because I'm your king. Like, I give you everything. Like, I created you. I, I made you who you are and what you are. I, I, I take care of you. I've given you guidance. I've given you everything. I've seen you, I've seen you through all of these different trials and all these horrible, horrendous things. I fought for you. That's nice, God, but we want a king. And you remember that they choose Saul? He's like a foot taller than everybody. He's magnificent. He, he, right, he's just, he's, he's a warrior. He is, he's incredible. Probably, you know, could be on a magazine cover. He's the man. Saul, yeah, let's get him. But he is a train wreck. He gets into like witchcraft and sorcery. He's seeing mediums. And, and by the end, he's not trusting in God. And he's, he's, he's a murderous guy. He tries to kill David, who God had chosen as king. And God had warned them. He said, that's going to happen. When you put an earthly king in the place of that, that can only be held by God, what you get is someone who will be so obsessed with that power that everything will be about him instead of everything being about God. And that's exactly what happened. The king demanded all of their allegiance, all of their money, all of their power, all of their influence was all for him. All glory, all honor terminated on him. And it was supposed to be all about God. So they put Saul in there. It's a train wreck. But then David comes along. Remember him? He's like the, the smallest one. He, he's not even in the, in, the, in the selection lineup. Right? He goes through all the big, you know, the, the big, handsome, strong, you know, boys of Jesse, right? And, and then finally, like, he's like, you got anybody else? He's like, oh, David, he's out, you know, tending the sheep. Bring him in. He's my, he's my, he's my choice. Look, God isn't about power. He's not about our strength. He's not about things that impress us. God looks at the heart. And even though David was messed up and, and did some things, broke a lot of commandments, broke them all, but yet he turned to God. That's the point. He said, God, I have sinned. Against you, I have failed. I, I need you. He had that conviction over and over again in his life, showing us, okay, this is more, not perfect, but we're getting close. Like, this is God's idea of, of a ruler, 
But then after him, you have Solomon and you have all the others and they go further and further away until the promise is fulfilled in Jesus, right? He's born in Bethlehem. He, he, he raises the dead. He, he gives sight to the blind. He does all of these things. And now the time has come. And you get to John chapter 12, and the beginning of this week begins. It begins as Jesus goes on that donkey, and he goes into Jerusalem. Let's check it out. Romans, uh, John 12, verse 12. John 12, 12. Now keep in mind, this was after Jesus had raised Lazarus from the dead. After Jesus had a meal with Lazarus and Mary and Martha. So a man who was very, 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 very dead is now very, 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 very much alive. And it's important to see that. It's not just a historical detail because this makes the chief priests and the elders and all the religious rulers have a major problem. Because either Jesus is God Right? That's option number one. Jesus is God, or the other option is that Jesus is God. Okay? He raised the dead. Human beings can't pull that off. There's not a doctor good enough for someone to be dead for four days, beginning to decompose, and, right, that that's what they thought would happen. But Jesus just calls them out of the grave. They all saw it. They all saw it. And some of the eyewitnesses were like filled with hope and were like, yeah, he's here. The king is here. All is not lost. We have hope. Others went to the Pharisees and went, huh? He, you will not believe what he just did. And, they, and they've been plotting to kill him for some time. And now, now they have no choice. They have to either embrace who he is Join the crowd on Palm Sunday saying, Hosanna, Lord, save us. We welcome you into our hearts, into our lives, into the city of Jerusalem as our, as our triumphant king, or they have to end him. But we know the plan of God is, is that he would die, that our king would die. There was no other way. There was no other way. So you have all these people, this crowd, it says, gathered. They had come to the feast. They heard that Jesus was going to be in Jerusalem. So what they did is they took these branches of, of palm trees. This was probably like their national symbol. It was like their flag. It was like a banner, a sign of, of deliverance, of political power. Like, this is who we are. They would put it on, they put it on their coins, and uh, the Romans put it on their coins to sort of show them who's boss. But those, those palms weren't just a show. It was to say, look, here is the real ruler. Other, other gospels say they, they put them like as a red carpet for the king coming in as, as they went. And they're shouting, right, Hosanna, Lord, save us. Blessed is he. In other words, welcome, king. Because we welcome everyone who comes in the name of the Lord. We welcome this king of Israel. He's riding on a donkey to fulfill what Zechariah had preached many years before. Fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, check it out. Look, your king is coming. He's sitting on a donkey's colt. He's not on a war horse. He's not that kind of king. I was just talking in confirmation class about, about this, uh, that um, we have a hard time, and I believe they probably did as well, um, not seeing kings in a bad way. Can, can you think of a king that you would want ruling you? Like, like go through the annals of time in history. Is there somebody who'd be like, yeah, I, I want that one? I think it's a very short list. A very short. I, I, I have none that come to me. They're probably fictional ones from like a Disney cartoon. Um, and, 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 and let's be honest, all the good kings in the Disney cartoon, they're about to die right? Or they're going to get banished. You know, something bad happens. The bad ones always get them. And so we look at this and we're like, king, oh, king means oppression. King means dictator. I don't want that. And we were talking in confirmation. We, we, we'd prefer democracy. I want my vote. I want my say. 
Now, that's fine, right? I, I embrace America. I embrace what we do. But in my heart and for my soul, I, I don't want democracy. <laughs> you, you don't want me making decisions, right? You don't want human beings making human decisions about that. You want the Lord of all who's saying, look, this is what we do. I come to suffer. I come to die. I'm going to pay the price for your sins. And that's what he did. And, 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 and as the king, he comes as a king that, that is unlike any other king. He's not hiding in his castle. He's not hiding behind, behind his, his vast army and, and all of its uh, armaments and all of its weapons. No, he goes out in the middle, out front in the war and, and, and sacrifices himself for us. That's what this king does. He is here. And the message for us today is we don't have to keep looking for that thing, right? For that magic thing that, that's going to get us. Because let me just tell you that what happens is if there's something that you're hoping is going to fill your life and complete you, you will, you will finish out your days doing that, looking for that. You'll be like Gollum in the, in the Lord of the Rings. I got to see that movie, uh, The Two Towers, in the movies uh, this past week. It was awesome all geeked out about it, and uh, it was sad to watch. If you know the movie, uh, Gollum is obsessed with this ring, and the whole point is the ring turns you. It's such a good metaphor for what sin does. You can think of nothing else. You'll do anything to get that. You'll do anything once you have it to keep that. It doesn't matter who's in your way. It doesn't matter how much you love them. It changes you it 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 it, it, abs it totally absorbs you and, and it becomes right you become its its servant it's your master now and god's saying i, I don't want anything else to enslave you want anything he came to set us free from sin free from death free from all these things that's why he came now his disciples didn't get it at first and we won't either but we have the benefit of seeing Jesus glorified as they did. And then they remembered, they, they put it all together, what was written about him and what was done to him. And John tells us that the crowd that had been with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead, man, they continue to bear witness. That's what God's calling us to do, isn't he? We, we have seen that he's alive. We have seen that he is risen. We see that he's with us, that our king is here, that our king is with us every day, all the time. I, I love how they, the Pharisees, without even realizing it, show how awesome Jesus is. Because they're like, look, can't you see that this is getting us nowhere? You're not gaining anything the whole world has gone after him. What, what about us? I pray that that's, that's our life, that, that, that we are following him, seeking his face, seeking what he has to say about the things in our lives, asking for his guidance, asking for all that he has for us. Right? That's what we pray. We're going to pray the Lord's Prayer in just, in just a few moments. And we're going to say, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth here as it is in heaven. Lord, I want you to be king. I want, I want things to be done your way. Not my will, but yours. Not my way, but yours. Not my truth, but yours. And this is so important because even right now, man, there's things pulling at us. Try, trying to get us to say, no, 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 you need this. This is what will save you. This is what will make life perfect. It might be a, a political party. It might be a job thing, a, a money thing. It might be a relational thing. It's, it's something, and it's pulling you, and, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to attack you this week. It's going to say, hey, no, 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 you need this. To what we can say, no, 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 I got my king. I have all that I need. It's so simple, isn't it? There, there's, there's an endless, you, you could do endless doom scrolling on your phone of, of people telling you that, that this supplement is what you need. 
this, this sleep strategy is what you need, right? I, I see all this stuff. And some of it will be okay. Physically, it will help you, right? Mentally, it might help you. It might help you to, to study better, be more effective, right? I, I look for that. But none of it, none of it can do what Jesus can do to set me free from sin, to set me free from the devil. And he did that by dying. He did that by rising, something that only he could do, something that I can't accomplish. He already accomplished. He's already here. We don't have to wait for that ship to come in because our king has already arrived for us. He's already died for us, and he rose triumphantly already. He's going to take us home to be with our king forever. In his name, amen. Please join me as we go to God in prayer, in a prayer of confession. As we bring to him all those things that we have seen as the way, all those things that we have seen as a truth or, a, uh, or something that we, that we feel will complete us. Let us go to him now. Heavenly Father, Lord, search our hearts for things that compete, for being the center of everything, those things that lie to us, claiming to give us our worth, claiming to, to give us the best identity ever, to be that secret thing that we need, Lord, help us to see that you're our king. And for all the world to see, you went into Jerusalem as our king. A king unlike any king that's ever come before. A king who came to die for us, to do nothing but give and give and give. Lord, even though all glory belonged to you, you emptied yourself. You took on the form, our form, the form of a servant, taking on our guilt, taking on all of our shame, all of it, our idolatry, our tendency to wander, our tendency to, to fill our lives with things that, that are not of you, things that fall short of who you are. So, so we place those things at your feet and ask you to forgive us. Renew us, Lord. Lead us and guide us each and every day to know that our King is here and our King is with us. And so now we get to live as children of the King. Lord, help us to see that blessing for what it is every day as we await the new heavens and the new earth, the eternal kingdom of God that we have been blessed to be a part of, both now and forever. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And this week uh, on the Guitar Preacher channel, we got some follow-throughs coming, and they're going to be uh, really tracking and help us, leading us through the events of, uh, of this Holy Week uh, that we see leading up to Good Friday uh, and beyond. Uh, so I, uh, again, I encourage you to check those out. And uh, again, in response to this great love of God, we, uh, we take our offerings and our tithes.
Let us stand together as we confess what it is uh, we believe. Not just what it is we believe. I know we often say that, but this is like who we trust in, uh, what unites us as God's people. And so uh, let's use the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and he sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. And from thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins resurrection of the body and the life everlasting amen amen let us go to the lord in prayer heavenly father there are some days where it just seems overwhelming all the things going on in our hearts the things that uh, we hear around us that might cause us to fear or to doubt or to question Lord, help us to take those things to you, knowing that, that you give us certainty. Lord, you give us uh, faith instead of fear, life instead of death, hope, right, instead of desperation. So we look to you, and we, and we look to your truth, and we're thankful for that sacrifice and for that empty tomb that is that, that the reality for us in our lives. We have that victory, Lord, and that we would live that out, that we would show the world the hope that we have, the, the healing power that you have is, is just incredible. And Lord, we ask you to be with, uh, with, with Brittany's, uh, with Brett, uh, a family member of theirs. And Lord, we're just thankful for a successful lung and, and liver transplant, Lord. I'm just praying for your healing uh, and continued, uh, just for that recovery, uh, for all of that to, uh, to continue to work and continue to, uh, to be a, uh, a blessing to, to Brett. And we just lift up that, that whole family, Lord, and we lift up Irene's, uh, one of her clients, Terry, who's having a spinal surgery. We ask you to be with Beth, uh, who's with us, Lord, uh, for healing from a broken foot. Uh, thankful for Liam McMahon having uh, had successful surgery on his leg this past week. And uh, just be with him and be with all who are going to be going through that difficult, uh, painful time of recovery uh, and healing. Uh, may they and we know your peace throughout all of that, your love, your, your steadfastness, and your, and your mercy, that you would continue to, to shower us with that, uh, even as we struggle with, uh, with, uh, with our own battles that we face inside of us. Uh, might be anxiety or depression. It might be uh, some sort of addiction or, or some sort of um, just thing we fear or that we're uh, just uh, worried about, concerned with. That we might bring those to you, Lord, that, that you might give us uh, maybe an ability to, to make a difference, an ability to make a change uh, or to turn to someone who can. But, but all the time, Lord, we turn to you because we know that you make all of that happen. And we're just so grateful that you count us as your own. And Lord, just be with uh, the people out at uh, our, our sister church up in Easton as they uh, welcome Pastor Kern, that uh, you would bless them in their, in their time together as pastor and, 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 and people. Again, that, that, that many in that in that, uh, in that town, in that area, would, would come to know you, would be comforted and reassured through their ministry and through their, their witness. And may today just be a celebration of, of your work among them and, and for us to remember that as well. We lift up all of our leaders, all who serve, all who give so much, not only here but in their homes, in their work, and, and, and in their schools. Lord, that we would make a difference with your word in what we do and, and how we live. That our church would, would have this witness. That we'd be this light on a hill, a city, 
right, that, that shines brightly with your light and your truth. And Lord, be with our nation, struggling with to find out who it is and, and what it is and uh, the division and, the, and the, just, just the hatred and the, and the divisiveness that's there, Lord, that, that we would be uh, people quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to be angry, but that we would hear people out who, who might have vastly different uh, thoughts than us or, or philosophies than us, that we would just look to you to, to give us the love that we need and the truth that we need that we might speak all that truth in love. Lord, be with uh, all of us this week as we, uh, again, retrace your steps to the cross, that we would be filled with, with thankfulness and, uh, and joy that, that, that you would love us that much, that you would go through all of that for us. So Lord, help us to embrace you in all that we do and all that we say, we just lay all this at your feet, everything on our hearts, everything on our minds. We give it all to you. And we pray all of it in Jesus' name. We pray together the prayer that he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Well, we get to go to our Lord as he gives us his very body and blood uh, given and shed for us. This communion is, is such an important thing for us. Uh, it helps us, it heals us, and gives us life. And so let us sing, uh, again, this song that celebrates communion.
by his wounds we shall be healed. This is communion. Take it and bread, receive the cup. His mercy is enough for the many and the one. This is communion. Take it as often as you will. For his blood is power still. By his wounds we shall be healed. Such a great reminder that uh, those words, uh, that this is his, his body and his blood given and, and shed for us. Uh, and just by those wounds, by what he did, we're healed uh, physically, uh, emotionally, spiritually. Just the whole thing uh, is, is bound up in this and it affects every part of us. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take the communion packets that we have. We're going to hear these words of Jesus in that upper room to his disciples, but also to us. And as we hear about the body, we're going to take the bread and eat. And when we hear about the, his blood and the wine, we're going to take and drink. And so we begin. It was uh, when our Lord Jesus Christ, and that night when he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. And so let us take and eat the very body of Christ given for us. And in the same way also, Jesus took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and he said, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is a New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so let us take and drink. This is the blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Well, we are sent out to be God's people, to uh, show his love to the world. So we go with his blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. Lord, lift up his countenance that he would look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen.
We go in peace that we might love and serve the Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God.